We are back. This is This Day with B.J. Arnett. And my guest today, Steve, and now with your lovely wife, Ruth. Thank you so much for joining us, Ruth. This discussion of, about the relapse solution is important. And one of the things I wanted to make sure we hit on before we close out about the book was some practical applications, some practical steps to getting to the solution part yeah. because it's the it's the part that we want to get to and I think people really need to get to but how do you get to the solution you know I we talked about surrender uh, yes. a, a little earlier and that is the very first step it mm -hmm. always is and coming to that place where you've truly surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, he's the boss. Yes. And so uh, allowing that faith to start to build and starting to do simple things. You know, I was sharing with her the other day, just being able to surrender my finances to God was a big step for me. Yeah. But I cannot tell you how something so simple as tithing my money mm -hmm. increased my faith. Yes. So doing little things like that are, are keys to begin to engage God. And I have a, a little bit in the book about engaging God in covenant. What does that word mean? Mm. How do we engage the covenant with God? It's key to our understanding of spiritual relationships. Yes. And, and so we, we have to learn that with God first in order to understand how to interact spiritually with other human beings. And that, that we don't even contemplate very, very often, but there's a healing in that as well. Um, but there are lots of other practical steps in terms of daily disciplines, things like accountability, being willing to be accountable to another human being. And not feeling like someone yeah. holding you accountable yeah. is to fuss at you right. or to or to press you or or any of those negative things. Accountability really helps you grow in whatever area. It That's just right. helps you grow. Right, right. It helps you meet the mark that, that you've set. Right. Well, well, we all need help, and, and so sometimes if I have a goal mm -hmm. uh, and, and I never tell anybody about it or I never have anyone there, so that's why support groups tend to work because mm -hmm. when I give my story to some other people in a support group, I begin to say what my goals are, that holds me accountable without really even knowing it a lot of times that's what we're doing. Yes. And so in church, we sometimes forget that, though, because we don't, we don't do transparency real well sometimes <laughs> in church, do we? So. Oh, Steve, you're meddling now. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious, but that's yeah, so true. We need to be better. Yeah. We want, we want, we go to church and we want to look all nice that's and right. clean and da, 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 and all, all is well. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and everything's no. crashing. No, yeah. And, and, and everything's yeah. crashing, and the and the very people that should be there to help us, we are cutting ourselves off right. because we don't want to be unveiled, and sure. and and that's just ridiculous. Right. But we we have a solution. We and, do. And, and we really need to grab a hold of that moment. You know, one of the things that I really like about your story is the resolve that it has, it will, it has, and it continues to get better. Amen. It will, it has, and it <laughs> continues. Because that's, as yeah. I was listening to you, I was like, it, it will, it has, and it continues to get better. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and as it's gotten better, you can now look back on your walk and say, wow, I was there. Now look at where I am now. So many of those. So many of them, right. So <laughs> right. many of them. Look, I can yeah. attest to it. Yeah. I, I got yeah. mine. So yeah. many of those moments, I just go, wow, yeah. I am not who I was 25 years ago. I'm not yeah. who I was as a, as a teenager. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I'm not who I was. Thank God I mm. was not. I'm <laughs> not who I was. But you two have walked together in areas that, that would, to most people, seem like, oh, that's a little much. And it's called the mission fields. Mm -hmm. Being a missionary is just not the glamorous life of Christianity. It is to us. <laughs> See, there you go. Change your way of thinking. <laughs> yeah. But, Ruth, you grew up in a missionary life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, my parents have been missionaries for 62 years in Mexico. And uh, that's what I know. That's what I grew up in. And uh, I've been... We'd have mission teams come down. I've been interpreting for people since I was 12 because of the American missions teams that would come down. But um, I had the privilege of growing up in Mexico. And even though I stood out like a sore thumb with my blonde hair and blue eyes, 
as I, a Mexican. I never, as a Mexican, <laughs> right. That's what I was thinking. I never felt prejudiced against down there. Wow. I mean, I was harassed a lot. Because, uh, I'm talking like groped on the subway or something like that because of my looks. I attracted a lot of attention that way. But, but I really... I really didn't see prejudice down there. Wow. And I really wanted to fit in. In fact, when I was a little tiny girl, I took a black crayon and a, a brown crayon and I tried to color my hair black and my skin brown because that's how everybody looked around me. Right, right. <laughs> to fit in. But um, I felt very accepted down there. As you grew up, <coughs> excuse me, as you grew up, you, your husband told me that your first language is Spanish. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you were born not in the United States. No, in Mexico. In Mexico. But your first language being Spanish, when you came here, when you came to the United States, did you feel like something just is like off? Yes, I felt like a <laughs> fish, yes. fish out of water. Really? Um, when I was two or three, we went to see my grandparents in Illinois and they had a fit because we knew no English, you know, and they're Americans. Right. Uh, but You knew none. At that point, no. But the, even later, when I was 14, we lived in Texas for one year. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that was the worst year of my life because wow. I look like an American, I talk like an American, but I have no clue. What American life was like? Was like. And mm. so wow. in the cafeteria, I'm like, okay, what do you do here? Okay, you get your little tray. And I went and sat at a table with Hispanics and blacks in Texas. Because that's who you're used to being around. And wow. I got bullied and harassed about why did you sit at that table? And I would say, why shouldn't I sit at that table? And wow. nobody would tell me why. Wow. I had no idea about prejudice. Right. Or they would bully me about things I didn't know about. So that was a very hard year for me. So when my parents say we were moving back to Mexico, I was you were like, yay. Yeah, <laughs> yay. So in, in, in missionary life, you knew nothing else. So it wasn't different to you. It was simply your life. Yes. How did you two come together? We met at a Bible college, uh, Christ for the Nations in Dallas, Texas. And uh, yeah, I uh, brought her home telling my dad that I, was bring I met a Mexican girl. And this, <laughs> this is kind of funny because he's kind of old school, if you know what I mean. So. <laughs> He wasn't He's too sure like, how he felt about it. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Who are you he, bringing home? <laughs> so he opened the door oh, and sees her and he goes, You ain't no Mexican. <laughs> and, so, and, then, and then he found out her she story. Speaks, she started speaking Spanish to him. And uh, that is hilarious. We, we pulled one on my dad. But, uh, but yeah. And I have both citizenships. Yes, yeah, she's Oh, you have the dual citizenship. My, right. Yeah. That's amazing. And so we're planning to go back. For her, it's going back to Mexico. After going home. Sir, we served in the Caribbean for eight years together uh, with Jamaica. Christ for the Nations in Jamaica. And we haven't been on the field in a while. So now we're going back on the mission field, but it's to Mexico now. And it, we're. And I know yeah. you're about ready to burst oh, with yeah. excitement. And it's, and it's, Look at her oh, smile. Yeah. She <laughs> like immediately starts smiling. It'll be going it's, <laughs> it's, it's so yeah. funny because God dragged me kicking and screaming out of Mexico. I never wanted to leave. And then he dragged me to Jamaica because I told him, if we're going on a mission field, why can't we go to Mexico? But God was saying Jamaica. Right, right. And I said, I don't like heat, and <laughs> yeah. I want to go somewhere where they speak Spanish. <laughs> right. But once we were in Jamaica for eight years. Then you didn't want to leave then Jamaica. Then God had to drag us kicking and screaming out of there because we didn't want to leave Jamaica. Yeah. You know, we had fallen so we, in we love. Oh, we love Jamaica. I can, I, yeah. I can yeah. s only imagine how wonderful it was to be in Jamaica. It, it was beautiful. Uh, the people are so sweet. Well, and worship at church was always just so uh, much fun and lively. And, you know, the foods and the flavors and the colors and the music. Uh, it, it, we cried for two days when we yeah. left Jamaica. Oh, my <laughs> they, goodness. They, they named us honorary Jamaicans. Oh, <laughs> so, honorary so, Yachties. Yes. Honor, honorary, honorary Yachties. <laughs> that's right. That's Jamaican for real. Yeah. That yeah. That is... Mm. That is the color and culture of love mm. for what God's called you to be. Mm. You know, the, we often think about uh, where we would be most comfortable, and, and that's not what God thinks. He thinks mm. about where we reach, what right. he set us on the earth to do and be. Right. Where he plants us is where he wants right. us 
to flourish. So you get to Jamaica and then you fall in love mm. and then it's lightning bolts and he yeah. says, oh, okay, time to go somewhere else. <laughs> For the last three years we were there, we were working with homeless wow. and with crack addicts on the streets of Montego Bay. We had an inner city outreach called Faith Walk, and that was quite an education, let me tell you. But uh, we, lo we learned a lot. We learned a lot. As, as, as you go back to Mexico with this mission trip, how long do you expect to be there? Until God says otherwise. So you are literally yeah. listening yeah, we're, we're and going living. according right. to what he says. Yeah. And we're partnering with Teen Challenge mm -hmm. uh, as we go, hoping to plant a new uh, Teen Challenge Center, which is a rehab center right. in Mexico City. And we have a great partner church that we're going to be working with. That's there. awesome. Yeah. So we're looking and forward to that. I've been working in domestic violence agencies for the last five years. And so I'm really looking at um, starting to work with victims of abuse. I've done support groups and, and like he was saying about support groups, they are so vital in yes. the recovery of a trauma of, of abuse and all of that. When we go to Mexico uh, to, visit, to visit, the women just are drawn to her now yes. because, I don't know, they just seem to instinctively know that she has a ministry for those that have been abused. And she went through some things in and, her own life. And she life. has a yeah. heart yeah. For, to help for those who are still going through those things. Right. When you think about uh, all that uh, you guys have been through together and, and separately, and you look at yourselves now and what you are about to undertake in Mexico, are you just bursting with excitement right about now? Yeah, yes. well, it's, it's quite a transition. Uh, now we're a little bit older. You yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> it's and it's still, so yeah. it's a, it's, it is a transition. It's so it's a lot of work and and and, and putting all the pieces together uh, and making selling a house and packing and yes, moving. Yes, yes. We're going through all of that right now, but so, we are and excited. We've got to get yeah. rid of almost everything, everything we yeah, own because yeah. we can take very little down. Yeah. And so I tell my friends, one day I'm overwhelmed, and the next day I'm so excited, and the next day I'm overwhelmed. And the next day I'm so excited. Exactly. And, and I think exactly. everybody who goes into a, a foreign mission feels this way. Uh, but any kind of a new, I've always said, you know, the next thing, the next assignment, I'm always excited when God does something new. That's it. And, and so we're, we, we are, we're pumped about, you know, the prospects of doing, doing this new work down there. There, there is a, 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 another story to tell. There's another book to publish. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's another place to continually love on uh, those who have felt unlovely. And you all are going there to be God's hands and feet and face mm. and smile. Yeah. His loving kindness and tender mercies will roll right off of you onto those people. So God bless you on this journey. I'm, I'm excited for you. I just love the fact that your face lights up with the concept. It just is like so obvious. So embrace the joy of it. Like you said, on one day, it's overwhelming to pack. But the next day you remember, I'm going home. She, she's been looking for this opportunity like 30, 30 years almost. I'm yeah, loving it. So, yeah. You yeah. all just have a, a a, a great blessing ahead of you as you've been walking in great blessings. Thank you so much for being with us today and sharing your story and sharing your book, The Relapse of Solution. It's just such a pleasure to meet you both and God's blessing on your continued missionary work because the need doesn't stop. Thank you for always being ones who will fulfill it. God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank God bless you. you too. You guys, I know that you are wondering, well, what's my part? What can I do? I'm not really the one to go to another country to the missionary field. Well, guess what? Your neighborhood may be the mission field God has called you to. It could be right around the corner. It could be just next door. It could be down the alleyway or under the bridge. A mission field is where a need needs to be fulfilled. God bless you. Step out onto the deep.